Hello, NAI Hoops Nation, and welcome to episode three of the Road to Muni podcast. We're going to have a uh, uh, quick rundown, just a little bit of uh, the recast from games this week. Uh, we got conference games starting up this week, which is going to be a lot of fun already. Um, and then uh, we have a coaching interview uh, with uh, mobile uh, head coach, uh, Arch, our guy, Darnell Archie. And then uh, another great uh, segment, uh, one that I've heard some good feedback on already. Uh, with our coach's corner uh, with Kevin Lovers. So, uh, Coach, uh, welcome uh, to Episode 3. Uh, it was another active week around the NEI. Yeah, it was a full week for sure. I got a chance to catch uh, some good games. I don't normally stay up late, but uh, Coach Moore is a, a good friend of mine, so I, I stayed up late watching watching that uh, Grace-Oregon Tech game last night, which was a really fun game, and it looked like a really cool atmosphere, too, so a great small college environment. But, uh, yeah, lots to talk about this week, and – we're off and running. Yeah, off and running. I got to catch the the both uh, the one good part about uh, having some late games on uh, the, this weekend. Uh, I got got to catch most of the games this week, but then Saturday rolled around and I uh, I lived a normal person's life and uh, went to uh, tailgating gating and uh, and a uh, football game, uh, which was a okay. nighttime football game, and uh, lost my voice from yelling at officials a little bit. Uh, but uh, I don't usually do that, but. Uh, yeah, it was good, good, uh, good to get out in a way. I didn't get to catch as many games on Saturday, but uh, did catch that Grace Oregon Tech game last night. It was a lot of fun. So, um, but yeah, I mean, just looking around the the country, I, you know, I know we have a top twenty five poll coming out this week, um, and and heading into it, we have several teams that have obviously gotten beat, and uh, uh, it'll be interesting to see kind of where they're at in the rankings this week. But uh, you know, you look across the board, uh, even on Saturday's games, you know, uh, uh, Huntington got beat. You know, I know. Uh, uh, William Penn's now one and three, and then their top twenty-five streak is uh, probably in jeopardy um, as as they go into this week's polls. Um, and then you got uh, you know you got teams uh, uh, like St. Thomas, who we're going to talk about uh, here with, with Coach Archie. They uh, were able to knock off St. Thomas uh, uh, this weekend. And then you you even look in the you know, outside of the top twenty-five, and uh, I know you and I kind of texted back and forth a little bit with the uh, Sun Southern State Athletic Conference Challenge. Uh, this week where uh, the Sun Conference had, had or made a statement a little bit, you know, they started off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. And I, I think one thing you'll see with the polls typically is uh, there will be a reaction to early season re- results, but not an overreaction, right? Because, the, you know, teams are still teams and need some time to figure it out. So there's typically going to be reactions. Some people are going to move in and out, um, but there's not going to be an overreaction usually unless there's a major shift in, in expectation yeah and then the, the conference challenges are always good because you, you hear that chit chat all the time but our conference is better than yours and our conference is tougher than yours and pretty easy way to figure it out let's just you know size it up go toe to toe and on any given year uh, those results can sway one or the other but it certainly doesn't hurt when it comes postseason time and you're trying to make a case for why your resume um, you know, your league deserves maybe an additional team versus another league. So uh, that's probably where that'll come into play the most is, is when teams and Raiders are making arguments for, for teams from their league is, hey, our resume versus your league's resume and, and X, Y, Z. But it's a long, long season. So there's yeah. there's uh, there's a lot of hoops left and, and nobody uh, decided their championship fate uh on Halloween through through this past week for sure. Yeah, no doubt on that. And you know, it's I think we have mentioned it a little bit, but one of the coolest parts is uh you see a lot of travel uh coming around. I mean we saw yeah. international go up to Michigan, you know, you saw that out of California. You saw uh, the Masters out of California go to Oklahoma City for for a classic, you know, and um that's this the while well, conference season kicks off this week for for three leagues and we're gonna get more in depth than that here. I think that the the non-conference when you get to actually see some of those teams that can travel because not everybody I know understand that you know it's a little bit harder for some teams to travel and yeah you know, some leagues yeah as we you know as we've seen in the across the NEI some of these bigger leagues just can't travel as much either because you know you're you don't really want to go travel a thousand miles and have to turn around and play a conference game coming up you know you want to kind of get your legs underneath you and stuff like that but you know, some of these other leagues, like the the GSAC, you know, is when I mentioned Hope uh, International and, and the Masters traveling out, uh, with them, you know, even losing some uh, some teams in their league, it's a smaller league, and they have to go out looking for games. And uh, it's just cool to see some of these teams travel so far to go see some of these games because, 
you know, outside of the NEI national tournament, you know, a lot of these comp- or a lot of these uh, teams won't face each other. Yeah, and you think I always think about the experience for the kids too, and and the student athletes, and you know, there's a lot of guys that I've coached over the years that, you know, had either never been on a plane or never left the state, or you know, some of those things that you get to show them different parts of the country, and there's some great stories and memories that come from those trips, and you know, the games are fun, but the the camaraderie and the and the uh, the memories and the stories that that come from being on those trips as a team is is irreplaceable. They're always a lot more fun if you get off the plane with a couple wins, but uh, th- they can still be fun. And there's some great moments in there for the student athletes uh, and their overall experience. So it's really fun to see our teams getting out and traveling. And like we talked about with Coach Tonigo last week, you know, sometimes with scheduling, it's uh, especially for um, you know some of those top 25 teams it's not as easy to get get home games and things like that so they have to be willing to go outside their comfort zone a little bit and uh put themselves in you know like last night's a great example i mean grace put themselves in that environment that only helps them yeah. regardless of the result um you know to get in an environment like that get tested um battle through and, and come out with a really commanding win um you know things like that are, are really good staples for your program too yeah, and I, I've been writing, uh, and it'll be uh, posted here on, on Monday sometime, if, if not already posted by the time people are listening to this uh, shortly after. But, uh, um, you know, just reviewing some of the – we got a new segment, uh, a new article a series coming out with the Stock Watch report, basically uh, highlighting teams that, you know, stock up and stock down. And, and three teams that really impressed me that I did get a watch this week. Uh, Rocky Mountain looked really good. I mean, they're super talented and yeah. uh, went out. And I watched that Arizona Christian game. Uh uh, Arizona Christians as talented as that were de- very deserving top five and Rocky wasn't hung in there in the entire game and uh, had chances to to win it put it away and, and Arizona Christian does especially what home teams do but Arizona Christian team or Christian uh, made enough plays down the stretch to, to win that one and uh, I thought they looked really good I, I thought Roosevelt out of uh, the CCAC I know they're moving D2 next year but uh, D Brown's got them looking uh, pretty good early. They they had a convincing win over Madonna and and also beat uh, Lawrence Tech. And uh, I know their schedule get tougher, but uh, um, I thought they looked really good. And then and then Briarcliff, uh, you know, they've had uh, four straight games with a, a player over thirty points. It's, it's been a different player for three of those four games, and uh, they got a top twenty five win uh, this weekend as well. So um, I thought those three teams uh, here early in the season uh, uh, looked pretty well or pretty good, and uh, it's been fun to follow those teams to. Like you said, you know, you don't win national titles uh, in this opening, you know, week or week or two and a half or sorry, week and a half to two weeks. But uh, uh, you certainly can uh, take your team from, you know, maybe somebody that didn't have eyes on you to now people are starting to pay attention. And then I guess to the next, you know, the next standpoint or the next uh, point as well in the fact that uh, now scouting reports are starting to come out. So, you know, teams are going to be interesting over the next couple of weeks here. Uh, as we get into some of these other games and on what scouting reports look like, not just as a team, but as an individual as well. And, and now, you know, can you take away somebody's best player? Or if, if uh, you are a best player on a team, you know, how do you adjust to a different, you know, defensive scheme that somebody may be throwing at you for the first time? Yeah, it's like the uh, the NFL backup QB effect, right? The <laughs> the first week they play when nobody's ever seen them before, you know, they, they usually do pretty well. I think the Vikings saw that today and then, you know, but week two, if that same person marches out there, it's a different story because now you've got them kind of figured out. So, yeah, scouting reports in particular, that has an impact there for those teams that have a lot of new faces, right? Uh, you know, because people are starting to figure out, oh, okay, that's that's who that is. That's what they can do. And, yeah, that's where the fun part comes in on the coaching side is, is uh, you know, moving moving those dials a little bit and trying to figure out the right ingredients. And also teams still just continuing, like we talked about last week, to figure out who are they. You know, there's still teams that are, uh, we saw that, I saw that with a few games last week, you know, um, teams are still trying to figure out who are we, you know, whether that's new leadership, you know, new coaching or new players or combination of both. I think that can, that can play a, play a part as well in, in the results that we saw last week. Yeah. And, and unfortunately it's, uh, happens every two. We were, we're seeing a lot of teams that are pretty banged up as well. And, and, uh, mm-hmm. um, here in a couple things across the country or some players that may be out for the year, which is unfortunate and you never want to see that. Yeah. And also, uh, you know, also just seeing some players that maybe hurt that are out a few weeks and, um, you know, some of those teams that do get those players back, uh, whether they've played one game or zero, um, you know, may have some adjustment when those players get back as well. But 
Um, at the same time, it's just, uh, you know, part of that and if some of these losses you're seeing, I saw over the weekend, you know, were a couple uh, key injuries or two that uh, kind of led to that as well. But um, a lot of factors that go in. But I, I, one thing I've learned over the years is that, uh, you know, at the NEI level, at least, you don't have a lot of people retracting the injuries. So a win's a win's a loss a loss at this level is, is kind of what I've learned over the last three time. Weeks. We got three leagues starting up this week. And uh, we, we took a different route this year with our podcast. And as, as leagues start up, we're going to do a little bit of a, a breakdown and or slash preview um, for, for each league. Um, with three starting up this week, we're going to start off. Uh, we have the Appalachian Athletic Conference uh, that will start off on Wednesday. Um, and then with the Heart America starts off with one game on Saturday. And then the Wolverine uh, Hoosier Athletic Conference also starts off uh, with a game on Saturday. So um, as these game, as these leagues tip off, we're going to do a brief uh, breakdown of them and just try to help paint the picture uh, as we continue moving forward so you kind of get to know these leagues and these teams a little bit better. But uh, um, as we start off with the Appalachian Athletic Conference, uh, for those that don't know, um, this is a league that's been uh, – Union, uh, Union's been the, the, the power of the league. They've won – uh, nine straight conference titles. I believe they've won eight of the last nine uh, conference tournament titles. Um, you know, we saw them at, with the Indiana Wesleyan uh, this week. Uh, you know, they, they Lucky Arena is always a tough place to play, and they they went over there and uh, didn't fare too well. But at the same time, they're a t- top twenty-five team. Um, you know, going through a little bit of early season. Uh, I don't want to say drama, but uh, change as as we uh, change coaches over there. But uh, uh, right now, favored to win the Appalachian Athletic Conference. And then, um, you know, not going to go all the way down the list, but I will say that, uh, you know, th- this is a league that added uh, a new team in, in Pikeville. Um, and, uh, you know, this is going to be an interesting uh, development for this league because I think Pikeville, uh, who is pro- projected to finish second in the league, um, you, you know, can really maybe be that team that takes down Union this year. Uh, um, it'll be interesting, interesting to see. And then it's a you know, you have to do it first. It's easier said than done. Um, um, but for the Appalachian Athletic Conference, I'm going to just list off the top five now. Uh, Union, Pikeville, uh, Columbia International, who made the tournament last year for by winning the conference tournament championship game. Uh, you have a Reinhardt team that's always usually pretty good. Uh, and then in fifth place, Montreat, who's uh, always competitive as well. Yeah. Yeah, no, it should be a, an interesting league. Like you said, I, I watched that uh, Union Indian Wesleyan game, and you don't want to – overreact or underreact to results, but it certainly looks like a team that's still finding its way, I guess. Is they, they have talent for sure. I mean, Mark Carl Turner and others, but um, still finding their way a little bit, a uh, new system. And, and you could tell they're, they, uh, they have, that's a team to watch grow as the year goes on, I'm sure. And then, yeah, the addition of Pikeville and then, you know, Columbia International, Montreat, those, they've been knocking at the door a little bit. So there's, it'll be an interesting league. And I think with the, the change at union, you know, it could be, um, you know, the year for somebody else to step up and take it. But like you said, they actually have to do it. <laughs> it's easier said yeah. than done. So, Yeah, and I think this is just a league just to, to kind of paint the picture for everybody that it, it seems like everybody just beats up on each other all year round. And so you have a lot of similar records, but then you have Union who the reason why they're, they've been winning uh, league title after league title after league title is the fact that they – avoid all those landmines you know quote-unquote landmines by yeah. they just win games you know they take care of their home court and when they go on the road they they find ways to win there too and even though they you know may lose two or three games uh, in the regular season uh when you have 24 league games i think it's 24 it's the 24 league games um you know you can't lose eight nine ten but you can lose two or three and get away with a league title yeah yeah i mean a lot of leagues in america if you win at home and you win two out of three on the road, you're, you're going to win the league. Uh, it's a fairly robotic formula that you can apply to most conferences. Um, so, you know, you're going to drop a few on the road. You got to defend your home court for all these leagues we're going to talk about. Uh, and then you got to find a way to scrap and claw and get some on the road. And they don't need to be pretty. Uh, <laughs> you know, we talked about that earlier. Just a win is a win is a win when it comes to uh, putting a tick mark in the right column and, and moving through conference play. No doubt. And we'll see if some of these other teams, I know Brian had a couple uh, nice games this weekend too, but uh, we'll see if some of these other teams can creep in. Uh, certainly, you know, I want to put an emphasis on, as we talk about all these conferences uh, coming up here, that uh, just because you were picked to finish somewhere does not mean you're going to finish there. So, um, you know, it's always uh, interesting to see those teams that pick, you know, in this league, you know, 12, 11, 12, 13, because there's 13 teams in the league, um, see if they can come up and, and uh, you know, maybe get themselves in the middle pack and, um, if you can make the, the league tournament, you know, not everybody makes every league tournament, but, you know, if you can make the league tournament, make the postseason, 
Uh, like we saw with the Columbia International team last year, I believe they were like the eight or nine seed, uh, went on and won that conference tournament, made the made the national tournament. So uh, I think yeah. look, for most of these teams here, it's 13 teams. Uh, their goal will be to make that conference tournament and then uh, see what happens, put the chips on the table and, and see if they can win one. So interesting league as always, and look forward to following that one. Um, again, they'll tip off uh, Wednesday, November 8th. Uh, that'll be a full slate of games there. And, uh, Coach, we're not going to mess around right away because uh, we get Pikeville Union on day one. So yeah, uh, eager, to yeah. see, eager to see that one on Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, you got to figure it out really quick. So, Yep. Moving into the heart of America, though, uh, this is a league that uh, you, you just – we're going to talk about a little bit later on in, in the coach's corner uh, with the team that uh, was predicted to win the heart in the preseason. That's Mid-American Nazarene. Uh, they're a team that returns a lot of a lot of players from last year. Uh, a team that certainly is uh, is very talented, and, and uh, Coach Hepker does a really good job over there. Uh, I think they're they're going to be good. Uh, William Penn, uh, kind of like what we just talked about with Unions, kind of own the league. Um, I believe they've been in the league eight years and won seven titles, uh, and I believe five conference tournament titles. So uh, just a team that you know seems to always be in the top twenty five. Um, you know they've struggled out of the gate a little bit, so we'll see if they can bounce bounce back. Uh, for a lot of those teams that uh, do struggle early, you know, conference play can play a lot. So we'll see what happens. And then you got, you know, a Baker, Peru State, and, and Central Methodist at three, four, and five. And uh, t- both or all of those teams have uh, made the conference or made the national tournament over the last couple of years. Um, you know, I think Central Methodist and Peru State are loaded with talent. So it's going to be interesting to see those teams and see what they can do as well. But uh, not a full slate of games that start off. We're only going to have one uh, t- that tips off on Saturday, November 11th. Uh, that'll be William Penn uh, taking on or having traveling to Clark's. Yeah, yeah. Mid America obviously is um, team to beat. I would say looking at it, uh, but and William Penn, you know, off to a slow start by record wise, but you never know what's going on, right? There's there's always like we've talked about, there's injuries and roster shifts and everything else. So uh, yeah, another good league, um, another league that uh, certainly has a favorite, but a uh, number of teams that are probably going to put losses on each other and, and it's league play is just like coach Archie was, was mentioned as well. It, it, the dial turns up a couple notches for league play in terms of just the depth of preparation, the intensity, uh, the execution required to win a league uh, over the long haul is, is uh, it's, it's difficult. It's really hard to win a league championship. So those teams that are uh, positioned throughout the year, it requires a full body of work, right? It's not like some of these, early season games we're talking about we can have one good night um but to win a league title you have to have a lot of good nights you got to be really consistent and sustain it for the course of the season yeah and one of the cool things about the heart that maybe a lot of people don't understand too is that uh, i think you know as we've talked to the last couple coaches uh uh you know they talk about the style play kind of in their areas and their league and this is a league that seemingly they they have i mean i don't know that they have 13 different styles of play but they they maybe have the most diverse conference and and just styles of play. You know, you have yeah. almost everything covered from zone teams to man teams to, uh, you know, teams that like to play up tempo like William Penn. You got teams that play slow, really slow it down like Clark. Uh, you know, you're gonna see a, a different contrasting styles in this game one. But uh, I, that's almost something I've always appreciated about the heart is just that uh, every team is just a little bit different style in the league, and, and every night you have to prepare for it. Uh, the last one to get us tipped off, though, is, is going to be the Wolverine Hoosier Athletic Conference. Uh, this is a league that we saw uh, an Indiana Tech team last year make a, a run all the way to the national title game before uh, losing to College of Idaho. Uh, they're actually uh, preseason th- picked third uh, in their league, even though they made the top 25. Um, but uh, I think this is a, a fun league always. Uh, but if, for those that have followed the site, um, you know that uh, uh, Lords is, is a team that we uh, really – have followed the last couple of years. And uh, I just think that uh, what, what uh, coach Hopkins has done uh, or Hop- Hopkins has done over there, uh, it, it just fun to watch their, their team, their style play. They always have talent. Um, and it's just a fun, a fun and Joey Holyfield, um, you know, for Lords is a heck of a ball player. So uh, cool to see them get the nod um, as the number one seed. I think that's probably pretty new for the WAC. I'd have to go back for, through some, some, uh, some conference polls, but uh uh, usually it's pretty traditional with uh, the cornerstones and the uh, Indiana Techs and even the Madonnas of the world. So uh, to see them in Rochester at one and two is uh, pretty fun uh, for for a league that uh, probably maybe comes in the league with the most question marks as well. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, 
That's interesting to see this. And we kind of talked about with Mobile as well, right? A new team at the top of the heap in terms of the preseason rankings. And I think one thing I've noticed over the last few years with the expansion of the tournament, you know, including more teams has really raised, um, I don't want to say people's hope or aspirations for what's possible at their schools, but I think it's really helped including more teams and uh, more teams getting the taste of that tournament experience. Um, you know, anytime I look at a preseason ranking and I see a, a national champion uh, coach, right, and then program that's pick, picked fourth, you know it's got to be a pretty good league, right? Because, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, he does a great job over there and has for years. And like you said, they've kind of been the blue bloods of that league. But, um, yeah, new teams and, uh, again, just reemphasize winning a conference is really hard to do. So, um, you know, Lords has their sights on it this year. So does so do all these teams, right? But Rochester Tech is really good. Cornerstone, Madonna, and uh, every coach in conference play would say, you know, you, you just cannot afford to take a breath, right? You can't take a night off. Uh, that's when you get bit. So, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to watch that league unfold throughout the year. Yeah, and I just want to uh, make notion of one more team here that because uh, it's always fun to see new teams join the NEI, and uh, uh, we've got a new Cleary team uh, out of yeah. Michigan that's uh, going to be fun to watch this year. I know that they uh, they played the first. Now, this is not just a new team to the NEI. It's actually a, a startup program, too. So uh, kind of fun to watch uh, them over the weekend. I got, caught a, uh, about 20 minutes of their games. And, um, you know, they'll be competitive. It'll be it'll be fun. You know, as they're growing a program from scratch, it's not always a, an easy way to start. But, uh, um, you know, a team that will certainly be fun to watch to see them get their first win as a program. And, uh, you know, you don't get to see that very often. You know, you don't get to see a team no. win their first ever in program history. So, uh, yeah, welcome to the NEI and uh, excited to have them and excited to see what they can do. I just wanted to kind of make notion of that just because it's a, one of those cool talking points you don't get to see very often. So tip off on Saturday, uh, number fourth uh, is uh, we're going to just have one game in this one, too. It'll be uh, Concordia, Michigan and, and Lawrence Tech uh, tipping off at uh, uh, 2 p.m. Central time. So uh, excited for all three of these leagues to uh, get tipped off this weekend. Um, I, I just, you know, you, you kind of see that. As the weather changes, you start seeing that, uh, or you start having that feeling of of the uh, the schedule changing as well. And what that means is that uh, when you start seeing leagues start to kick off or tip off their seasons, uh, more and more is going to start doing it. And I I think that conference, uh, when we start getting more heavy into conference play, uh, a lot more is on the line, and these games mean a lot more for teams. And you'll start seeing that, and uh, not just start seeing that in in the games itself, but as we mentioned earlier. Uh, these scout reports started getting better and these coaches all know each other in these leagues. And, and that's what makes the games fun because you start seeing these people that can really go in these leagues. So, yeah, yeah. It's fun to watch the journey happen. Um, and I, uh, yeah, get the popcorn ready and <laughs> get ready for week three here. So it'll be fun. Joining us uh, for our uh, coaches' conversation this week is uh, University Mobile head coach Darnell Archie. Uh, coach, you're in your fifth season uh, over there at Mobile, and uh, I know you got some D1 background. Matter of fact, uh, I know you're uh, getting ready for um, a place that you're no stranger to. Uh, you got an exhibition game uh, here tonight as a recording is going on. Uh, tonight, uh, uh, Monday, uh, you'll have a, a South Alabama, and you're currently uh, going through the gym uh, as your background, so it's pretty cool to see you. Uh, uh, there, but uh, I know you uh, spent some time at Butler, South Alabama, uh, over your 15 years of coaching, and uh, also have a unique playing experience. As I know you've uh, not only played at Butler, but also uh, spent some time with the Harlem Globetrotters. So, uh, quite a coach and, and basketball background in general as a player and coach. Um, but uh, welcome to the Road to Muni podcast. I'm excited to be on. Um, you know, when I became the NAI, NAI, NAI head coach at the University of Mobile about five years ago. I think I got a follow from you guys right away and a shout out. Um, it meant a lot, you know. Um, I'm excited to be a, to be a part of it, and you know, I live and die, live and breathe basketball, and um, just to be a part of this podcast and be a part of something special like this means a lot to me and my career. I think I'll just start, Coach, because uh, you you have that unique background. Uh, and I think it's important, um, you know, as you talk about different levels of play, maybe you want to talk about, you know, just with your experience from from being an assistant coach at Division One level to a head coach at NEI and, um, you know, what you've experienced just from the talent perspective and player perspective and, and overall just uh, from, from a basketball perspective of, of what the NEI means and stuff for you. That's right. 
Uh, so I was a director of operations at Butler from 09 to 2013. Uh, I was very lucky to be in two national championship games with Brad Stevens. Um, you know, and then I came down to Mobile, Alabama with um, Matthew Graves, the University of South Alabama. Coming from Indiana to Alabama, it was a huge culture shock in basketball. You know, we went from basketball country to football country. So it was a little bit different. Uh, then I traveled to San Antonio at the University of Incarnate Ward for a year and coached with my good friend Carson Cunningham, who was a coach at Carroll and an NAIA coach. Um, led them to, I think, a Final Four, maybe an Elite Eight. Um, just being around him for that year really sparked my interest. And, you know, family brought me back to Mobile, Alabama. You know, my, my kids were basically grew up here. They're now 15 and 12. Um, I knew Coach Joe Nyland was leaving Mobile to go to Spring Hill. And I interviewed for the job, and luckily I got it, you know, and I'm uh, blessed for that. But, you know, especially in the SSAC, and we, even we played St. Thomas the other night, great basketball players you know division one players that have been on the division one level or players that could be on the division one level i tell i tell guys that all the time um so especially my players but when the ball is tipped you know i know we're not playing in seventy thousand people in reliance stadium in houston but when the ball is tipped man it's basketball and these kids they live and breathe it like i said i do and they uh, they play their hearts out, go to class, do those things, and it's it's a it's a fun environment. I've really enjoyed every all my five years. What what's been your uh, your favorite part so far, Coach? What's your best memory so far at Mobile? You know, it's always probably that first win. You know, I um, I was my first two games. The coach before me, Coach Nyland, sent me to at Dillard. That's called the Battleground. We got beat there. And then I had to play a good Xavier team of New Orleans. I was 0-2. I didn't really know those teams at the time. I was like, these are good basketball teams. I was like, thank you, Joe. You know, and then we were on the road again at Suno, Southern New Orleans. Great environment. Uh, it was unbelievable. I had some guys step up. And I remember winning that basketball game. Uh, felt like winning a national championship at the time. You know, getting that first win under your belts. But um, that's, that's the first memory that comes to mind, along with others, for sure. Yeah. yeah, and, and uh, Coach, I, I know uh, preseason uh, top 25, uh, I believe it's the first time in a decade uh, for, for University Mobile. You uh, obviously have, have changed uh, the, the program a little bit and got them in the top 25 now, and now coming off a, a big weekend with the top 25 win. Um, you know, you want to talk about just, you know, you guys' style of play is, is you know, you guys have five guys averaging double figures right around, each, you know, almost the same exact uh, uh Point per game total at uh, I know the Demaria uh, Jones uh, leads at fourteen point eight, but then all the way down Joshua, Joshua Williams at twelve point three, and then you have four guys in, or three guys in between those two. Um, just kind of a fun style, and, and you guys are just so well balanced uh, when you attack other teams. Um, you want to talk about your style of play and just kind of those guys a little bit? So it's been fun. Um, you know, kind of seeing find the fruits of our labor. You know, Demari Jones. This is his third year. He came in as a freshman with me. Played a lot of minutes. He's a freshman of the year. Uh, we picked up a guy named Ezra McKenna halfway through his freshman year. His brother Sage is on our team. He was the Alton Liston Award winner last year in the NAIA. Uh, I think he was runner-up in the SSAC, the player of the year. Uh, they have another freshman named Trent. Uh, he's, he's a junior now named Trent Moy. So those guys were freshmen that are now juniors. So we're seeing that. Then you add a kid named Pooh Frazier uh, came in a couple years ago, and Josh Williams came back to me. And I had a kid from out of Mississippi. So it's – we are named Trey Smith, so we're, we're very familiar with each other. Um, you know, it's kind of a brand of basketball that has a little Southern flavor to it, but I have my Midwest touch on it. So we have our 105 sets. Um, you know, it's just that's what I'm used to. But, uh, but, but we got some athletes, too. You know, you got some athletes trying to run sets. Uh, it took a couple years for them to get used to that, but we have, we have our sets and we have our stuff. And, um, you know, like most coaches – um, we're going to play stingy defense. Uh, a lot of that comes from my Butler, my Butler ways um, with Brad Stevens. And it's very similar to the pack line, but it's got a little bit of Southern flavor in it where we're going to get out and press you too. So it's a little bit of best of both worlds in how we play. Talk about um, those games last weekend, right? We were talking earlier before you got on about just, you know, those challenges are fun, right? The the conference yes. challenges. It's kind of like everybody's always talking, well, my conference is better than your conference, and we play in the toughest conference in America, and this right. and that, right? But, hey, let's size it up and play each other, right? And that's pretty fun. Yes. I know you guys came out of there with a split, but no matter what, those are 
those are great games from my perspective to go down, put yourself in those environments. So talk a little bit about just the experience of that challenge. So two years ago, um, the commissioner of our league, Mike Hall, and the commissioner of the Sun Conference um, wanted to do a neutral site. You know, last year it was supposed to have been up in Montgomery. It was at Faulkner. And then this year it's supposed to be at a neutral site. Um, so I signed up for a neutral site. I didn't sign up for a true road game at Southeastern. But um, they have a beautiful facility and did a great job of hosting. Um, I knew that was going to be a tough game. It was their first game. They just lost uh, Riley Minix. Um, so I didn't really know how their offense was going to flow. So we didn't have a ton on them. They came out on fire. Good basketball team is Southeastern right there. And uh, we got down 15 at half. Our guys persevered, persevered battled back, and uh, we lost by three. Had a shot to send it to overtime, but it didn't go in. Um, and then we had the tall task of coming back the next day and playing St. Thomas. Um, and my guys really were up for the challenge. You know, St. Thomas is, is banged up. So I, I'm pretty sure, I'm going to say this, we, we caught them at the right time. Um, I definitely don't want to see them later in the season once they get healthy and Patrick and Coach Crary gets those guys going. So we got them at a really good time. But that's not to take away from how our guys played. And, um, you know, I was really proud of them. And that, that score was – a lot closer than what it showed in that sense. But, you know, we made some shots. and We're making shots. We're going to be a tough out. Um, and that's how – and that's a pipe for everybody. But definitely with the, the six guys that we have that can score the basketball. Yeah, and, and schedule-wise, I know uh, uh, you guys have been pretty active already, but even coming in November, uh, you know, you came off the weekend and you got the exhibition game uh, here on Monday night and then uh, uh, turn around and play that Spring Hill team you mentioned earlier – uh, on Wednesday, and then uh, uh, you guys are uh, – then you take a week off and then already ready for uh, Southern State's Athletic Conference play. And um, I don't know if you ever, uh, in your Division One days, uh, played uh, conference games as quick, but uh, you want to just talk about the transition from, from the – you know, what you're looking for here in these uh, – in the early season games and non-conference action, and then uh, how you guys transition uh, over into league play and how much right. your experience that you do have, because you have, you have a lot of guys that have been with you for a while, uh, what that'll be or what that'll mean uh, heading into right. conference play. So, you know, we, I was excited to go down to, to Lakeland in that sense, just because I knew Thomas and then um, Faulkner, like the names change on the back, but Coach Sanderson's got that. That team is good. Uh, I can't think of the freshman's name. Um, Cooper, yeah. Cooper. Hey, I saw him in person. I was like, this kid's from Alabama. How did he, how did he, I didn't know anything about him. I was mad. It's like, that's not supposed to happen. Out of, out, yeah. yeah that out of Alabama. That's my thing. Um, so I was a little upset. Um, they didn't know about him, but it, it was, it's going to be very helpful for us. Um, you know, tough game tomorrow exhibition. It's good for our program, obviously being in town, um, me coaching here for five years, obviously special, but, um, that Spring Hill game, our crosstown rival, and then we get a chance to re- relax for a few days before it really matters, you know, to, to answer your question. Like, we know at the end of the day our goal is to win a SSAC title. Um, you know, we were picked number one, but we know it's, it has to be earned. It has to be earned. You know, our, our phrase is, like, we're still hunting. You know, we're still hunting for our championship. I still see Loyola and Faulkner and Life as the, as the, the, the teams to beat, along with others. Um, so we're, we're going after that. Yeah. And yes. Conference play is a whole different animal, right? Coach, the, the, oh, the yes. dial gets turned up a lot in terms of, I mean, you're just so familiar with the other side, regardless of, like you said, players come and go, but, but most of those coaches uh, stay fairly consistent and it's, uh, it turns up two or three notches in those conference games, doesn't it? Say that again. I said it just turns up two or three notches in those conference games now, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Yes, it does. You know, especially in our conference. Um, you know, two years ago when Loyola and Talladega were in the championship game, it was arguably toughest. I mean, I, I don't think you could argue that it was the toughest, along with Faulkner and Stillman. We took a step back a little bit as a conference, but night in, night out, teams 1 through 12 or 13 now. You know, we just added Tennessee Southern and Thomas um, and Point. Like, it's it's a battle every single night to uh, to to compete and to get a win. Yeah, I think uh, going back to one of your earlier statements, and it's actually something we heard from Coach Tongo on last episode too, that, uh, um, you know, the different leagues have different styles of play, and it's uh, kind of cool to just to listen to you talk about, you know, trying to bring your Indiana style to, to the south, you know, and, and just uh, 
but that's kind of what you need to do too sometimes is be a little bit different than, than everybody else. And when you have that experience, Brian, I think that's why you're deservedly so, you know, preseason ranked number one in the, in the Southern States Athletic Conference. And um, I, I know you're going to start off with a, a new team. I don't know how much you got to uh, watch Thomas uh, already last year and then coming into this year. I know they lost quite a bit, but uh, uh, starting off with that new member that you were talking about already and then uh, turn around and after that, uh, I know you guys won't look ahead. I'll look ahead for you uh, with that Faulkner matchup. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. As well. So, so, uh, so, when I, you... so when I saw the schedule at the beginning of the year when it went um, SSAC Challenge um, to Spring Hill, to uh, and then Thomas and Faulkner right away. I was like, my goodness, what, what are you doing, coach? But um, uh, that's what I've been preaching to our guys all summer, trying to get them ready and conditioning and that things to, to be ready for this moment. And um, as coaches always say, you know, players make you look good. And, you know, I, I have some talented dudes and some guys that can really play. Uh, so they, they're making me look much better than I did my first couple of years. Coach, what? And you, and you don't have to divulge all the trade secrets here, but when you're out there recruiting, I like to give coaches a chance to say, you know, what what is it about coming to Mobile that would get me excited, or what what right. you know what what does a good fit look like for the type of player that you're looking for to be a member of your program? You know, for uh, what I look for personally, I know it's very cliche. We all coaches say it, but I really try to live by it. That's what Brad Stevens did when I was with him. Is high character kids, you know, and that that can be transfers, that can be junior college kids. I really look for kids that will fit the University of Mobile. You know, we are down here in the south. Um, we are close to the water. There's beaches probably 45 minutes away. Um, we're a nice Christian um, university, and it's a it's a beautiful campus. You know, it's out in the woods. Um, in the sense, we're about 10 minutes away from fast food restaurants and everything that you need. But at the same time, if you're looking for if you're looking for a place that the family friendly environment, um, that's from the coaching staff to the AD to to all the professors, you know, like that's probably a lot of small colleges in that sense. But, um, you know, if you're looking for a place where people know who you are and come out and support you and the love of the, the community, Mobile's a place for you. Uh, you're on the Harlem Globetrotters. Everybody's got their little tricks that they have. What was your go to? What was your trick? So I was only there about two weeks, so um, they, 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 found, they found a better player. Um, they showed me, they call it a ring. It's like a little eight thing where you kind of do a little spin behind the back. And I still remember it 20 years later. Um, sometimes I can balance two basketballs. You know, you can bounce one up and then like okay. flip it like that. So I actually learned that from somebody named Tanya Crivier. I went to Taylor basketball camp. So I grew up, obviously, in Indiana. I grew up at Taylor basketball camp from eight years old to about 15 or 16. Uh, Paul Patterson, yeah. legendary coach at Taylor. Uh, oh, yeah. So I learned I learned how to play there and learned a lot of my tricks at the Taylor basketball camp. Right. Good, good stuff. Well, coach, I know uh, I know for you guys, you got uh, practice going on right now and getting off. So I uh, appreciate you uh, spending the time to come join us on the Road to Muni podcast and uh, wishing you guys the best of luck this season. I appreciate it, and we're uh, we're hoping to get there. Um, it's obviously like like everybody, every other team. We want to make it to Kansas City, but we know it's going to be a, a tough road ahead and a long season. And that I uh, appreciate you thinking of us, and I'm excited to to be on here and looking forward to seeing you guys in the future. Have, uh, thanks, coach. Thanks, coach. As we've always mentioned every week, it's great to have uh, coaches from all around the country, and and. Uh, uh, as we try to move around the country with the coaching interviews as well. But uh, appreciate Coach uh, Archie coming on and uh, looking forward to see what the uh, University of Mobile can do this year. Uh, um, is there maybe a team that, you know, a lot of people don't know around the country, but certainly should get to know as they're uh, uh, right now uh, currently uh, predicted to win the SSAC. And we know how good the SSAC has been over the last few years. Appreciate Coach Archie coming on and uh, wish them the best. Just, just uh always reminds me what great coaches we have at our level too. And people that uh, bring some great experience and guys been in two national championship games at the division one level. It's pretty cool to, to hear his story. So. A segment that, uh, you know, we brought in for the first time last week and, uh, it's going to continue to evolve, uh, this week. Uh, I know coach, uh, uh, has got a lot of good comments on it already, but uh, we're going to have this week's version of the Coach's Corner with Kevin Lovers. Yeah, um, 
you know, last week, boy, I picked a couple of games that, that uh, ended up not being, not being quite as close as I thought they were going to be uh, on paper, but that's all right. That's, uh, that's part of the time of year we're in. Uh, looking ahead to Friday, uh, November 10th, 6 p.m. Central. That's what I got this game slated at for game of the week this week, uh, the coach's corner that I want to highlight. Um, Mid-America, Nazarene, heading over to Oklahoma Wesleyan. Should be a great game, top 25 matchup. Mid-America was 17 preseason, uh, you know, NAI tournament team from last year. It's a veteran group. Um, kind of like one of the games we talked about last week with Coach Archie, you know, talking about his team, a uh, veteran group, a lot of returners, uh, only got one game under their belt so far this year, um, got a win there, versus uh, Oklahoma Wesleyan, um, number seven preseason, championship aspirations in this program for sure, uh, Oklahoma Wesleyan's been a staple uh, in the top ten. I uh, got a player of the year candidate that we'll talk about here in a minute as well. They're they're off to a three and zero start on the year. I think they play one more game yet this week before um, taking on um, Mid America. So uh, that's kind of a snapshot of what we got. Uh, and then what are we watching this week uh, as we turn that game on? What do, what do you want to cue into uh, as a viewer and take a look at? So first thing that jumped out to me looking at both these teams is is rebounding, cleaning up the glass. Um, I think for to be effective in this game, they really need to make sure they're rebounding the first miss uh, every time. Definitely a key for them is going to be to keep Oklahoma Wesleyan under 10 offensive rebounds for the game. Uh, and then the opposite of that is true for Oklahoma Wesleyan. Okay, right now to start the year off, they're averaging 20 offensive rebounds per game, 20 a game. That's a lot. 13.2 uh, last year. They were sixth in the country last year with that. Uh, so for the key for them, uh, is going to be to just continue to punish the offensive glass, get extra shots, get extra possessions, uh, and get that going there. Next thing that jumped out for me uh, is really Mount Vernon's offense versus Oklahoma Wesleyan defense and, and which one's going to win on that battle. You know, last year, and again, only having one game under their belt this year, it's a little hard to predict, but last year, um, Mid-America was, uh, was number eight, uh, an offensive field goal percentage on the year. Uh, they scored 101 points uh, in their first game coming out. So key for them, I think, is going to get try to be to get the game high scoring, be efficient. But if they can get the game, you know, upper 70s, 80s, and beyond, I think they're going to have a really good shot to win um, for for Mid America. So for Oklahoma Wesleyan, uh, last year was number four in defensive field goal percentage. Uh, really, really good defensive group there, led by Coach Boswick. Um, key for them is going to be to keep the game in the 60s, right? They're going to want to see uh, Mid-America in, in the 60s. Mid-America is going to want the game uh, higher up, high 70s, 80s. So battle of uh, two wills there a little bit. And then the last one, highlighting a few players, uh, keep your eyes on the number five. Uh, number five uh, for Oklahoma Wesleyan, player of the year candidate, all-American candidate, um, Jaden Litsky. I might be saying that incorrectly. Uh, junior, I got that one right, or is it pronounced different than that? Uh, Lightsky, yeah. Lightsky, okay. And uh, and then number five, Ed Wright um, for for Mid America. Uh, he had 34 on night one, so he lit it up pretty good. So key for for both. Uh, you know, when I first started coaching, somebody told me this at the college level, and it really I think it rings true at most levels. It's not always about the X's and the O's; it's more about the Johnnies and the Joes. So. Uh, looking forward to seeing which one of these teams can impose their will. Uh, should be a great game, top 25 matchup, and uh, excited to take a look at that one this week. Yeah, and just to add in, I, I will uh, throw in, I know uh, Ed Wright's uh, a really, really good for him and you, and, uh, uh, and obviously uh, Leisky, uh the reigning uh, KCAC Player of the Year. Um, I think that... Uh, you know, even the secondary players there. You got Caleb Stokes at uh, Kansas West, or yeah. sorry, at Oklahoma Wesleyan, who uh, has been a two-time All-American and uh, really good too. And uh, there's a kid named Anthony Brown who, uh, for for uh, Mid American Nazarene, that uh, uh, for us uh, we've been following since his freshman year. Uh, one of the cool parts about being in uh, year five now is that we've we've seen some of these guys for so long, and uh, uh, even these COVID seniors, you know, that are coming around, we're seeing for a fifth year, but. Uh, uh, Anthony's a kid we've been following for years, and uh, he'll be him and Ed Wright uh, 
uh, are, are quite the duo uh, and in scoring and, and all that. And, and I know Anthony will be up for the heart player of the year this year as well. And I believe he's a two-time All-American. So uh, if you want to talk about talent, you know, you highlighted two good ones. Uh, but even the secondary player <laughs> players in this uh, oh, game yeah. are a lot of fun. And um, I, you could go all the way down the list because I know that there's yeah. you know, three or four guys uh, on, on each team here that uh, are going to be fun. But um, And something we haven't talked about a lot and we'll get into uh, further on in the, in the podcast um, these games are important too for the for the arc uh, ratings, you know. As, as yeah. both these two teams are inside their each other's arc, and uh, as we get, move on and we look for you know seeding purposes, because you you expect both these teams to probably make the national tournament again this year. But uh, just something I thought about while we were, we were talking about those, and something we haven't talked about a lot is uh, just the ARC ratings and how big these games can be uh, when you get uh, you know maybe maybe you get a one you know. These two teams could certainly be the number one, number two in the ARC down there at the road, and this game be part of that uh, that rating part of it. So, yeah, absolutely. It's it's uh, the further you get into the season, and uh, the more every game matters. I mean, they all matter, but anytime you get a chance to position yourself against another team inside the top twenty-five, somebody that's certainly going to be uh, in a good position in the arc. Those head-to-head matchups are really big, and they come up in conversation a lot. Uh, as you're, you know, I, I served on the art committee for, for a couple of years and it, it, um, the, you know, the head to head matchups are really important. Those conference challenges can be important just in terms of the conversation and the resume. So I think for both of these teams, it's a great opportunity. Um, like you said, there's a couple of players highlighted there, but both sides have several really, really good players. That's part of why they are who they are, uh, and why it's going to be a fun game to watch. So. Um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this matchup, and and there's a couple other good ones this week. It was kind of hard to pick pick one, but this is the one that jumped out to me the most based on on these two teams and and what we're looking at coming ahead this week. No, as I looked ahead, it was also a game that I had circled too. So uh, definitely looking forward to uh, this week's uh, matchups, and uh, as we enter basically week three of, of the. Uh, uh, of any eye hoops, I know uh, for for Division One guys out there, they start up uh, today here at, uh, on Monday. But uh, uh, any eye has been rolling into Week Three and excited for a lot of different matchups and excited for some of these conference matchups to play out uh, this week too. So, uh, you know, as we uh, move into Week Three, I hope everybody gets to follow. Uh, make sure that uh, you're following any eye hoops report. Uh, or at NAI Hoops Report on uh, Twitter uh, and also the website. We'll have articles out as we do all year long. Um, but uh, other than that, this is uh, uh, Junior and uh, Coach Lovers signing.